Hi, I'm Angela Ambrosia, and today I'm completing the series on communication with your inspiration. So in the other videos, we've been looking at how to communicate with yourself and how to de deepen that so that when you communicate with your partner, you have more of a connection to them because you've deepened your own connection. And we've looked at words, we've looked at feelings, we've looked at your body, and we've looked at the soul. So today we're talking about inspiration. So it's very easy when you've got into a relationship that things get into habits. They get into old habits that came from wherever they came from. We don't really care anymore when you're in the relationship. And when you're in that situation of communicating with a partner over a period of time, especially after the first romance has worn off, you become commonplace with them. You take them for granted. They become more like family. And it always fascinated me how with family that we could talk to them or treat them or feel feelings for them in very negative ways. So inspiration is going back to that first spark that connected you to the person or to the passion that inspires you to inspire that person, whether it's something that you're moved by the person, whether it's something that you feel when you think about the person in a positive way. So communicating with your passion is perhaps the most important aspect of love relationships. If you can reconnect to that and find that place within yourself of how to reconnect to that inspiration, what inspires you to be alive, what inspires you about the partner or the person. Then you can rekindle the relationship at, at many points. And I'm also thinking of points where the things aren't going so great and where you start to really doubt or question yourself or the relationship. How do you actually rekindle and tap into that inspiration? Part of what I struggled with when I was struggling in relationships was when I got down about the relationship or uncertain about the relationship, I started to literally crumble internally. I heard doubts, voices in my head, maybe old feelings, maybe old habits came up, maybe old thoughts. And they took over and they had a lot of power. And even though I was a dancer and I could experience love and joy and access that in a second as long as I felt my body and felt dance moving me, it couldn't transition into my, my love relationships. And some of the most important relationships were the ones with my family. So I found that in my family, because I was with them longer than my partners at the time, there was lots of old, old stuff being recycled. And it, and it kind of scared me that this old stuff had a presence in the relationship more powerful than the joy and the good feelings that I felt when I danced. So I made a commitment to actually explore what that was. What, what is it that reinvigorates and re-inspires us to love? What, what helps me feel true, divine connection or that sense of being one with something greater than myself? Why is it so easy to do it when I put the music on but not when I'm actually connecting to my siblings or my partner? So then it became a process of really understanding that when something comes out to dampen the passion or put out the passion, it's a process of actually seeing what's going on and not being drowned by it. So for me, when my parents grew up, they were very passionate Italian people, screaming a lot, passionate in anything they did, food, cooking, whatever they did. And their foreplay was also jokey and passionate too and I didn't understand what it was but I knew that when they were passionate that there was something there that was drawn on and it, and it gave them a fuel even if they were arguing. <laughs> so when I feel that same passion I also want to see how it can create something positive or beautiful and sometimes when I'm feeling anger or I'm feeling an emotion that's also full of a lot of energy I thank my parents for teaching me that. And I also feel, what do I do? I go into a bit of a shock mode because I wasn't really verbally um, 
adept or good at expressing emotions, what I was feeling. I could feel them intensely in my body, as we all do. All human beings are wired in their neurobiology to feel emotions, but I couldn't verbalize them. So I started that process, which I share a lot with you in the videos about understanding what are you feeling. So that was the first thing I had to do a lot. Spend a lot of time just watching and feeling what I was feeling. If the life of the relationship was stuck, if the energy of the relationship was stuck, where is it stuck? Why am I feeling this stuckness? Where does it come from? A lot of the coaching questions are, are about that. When you go into a session, it's like looking inside and going, okay, what, what's stuck here? What's coming up for me in my feelings? What do I think is going to help me in this situation? So a lot of what I share with you when we go into a meditation or connected exercise to the body is literally just practicing that. And in the moment, if I'm feeling this passion not really bubbling through, it could be another energy that has to bubble through. Passion and inspiration is that part of us that humanly we wish to keep growing and nurturing and inspiring and finding new ways to connect to it. Sometimes, you know, people go outside the relationship because they want more passion. And the mystery uh, is how do we get it in the relationship? It seems to be really hard to stay in one relationship and get the passion ignited again. But the truth is, why is it hard to reignite that passion? It's because there may be anger or some sort of hurt or some unrealized emotion dampening literally putting out the fire of your passion. And you can also see that anger is a really strong trigger of what needs to be explored or opened in the relationship. So if you're with a partner and your anger's being triggered or these old big emotions that are coming up, there's something there that if you go into it, you can actually find what it is to shift your framework on it so you can ask your partner to come with you and go the next step. So I'm going to give an example because that sounds really abstract. So for example, if you're really angry and we're going back to the intimacy level about how your partner doesn't spend time with you or doesn't say kind words to you, if you can connect to rather than going and sat telling them and we've done it throughout the series and communicating. We've said you can go into a soul meditation and tell them what you really think. You can go into your feelings and do a visualization and share it with them at that level. You can explore in your body how to communicate with them on a feeling basis as well. With passion, the key with when we're not getting our inspiration from the relationship is to go in and say, what do I need here? And find out what's not being met acknowledged. So if you're in a situation with your intimacy and you're not getting that from your partner, we can spend all day arguing with our partner telling them you're not taking me out enough, you're not spending quality time with me enough, you're not touching me enough, you're not doing this enough. We can say that all we want but if we went inside and felt what it's like not to get that need that we so want and then spend the time to actually get creative, which is the other side of passion. It just allows you to flow with that creativity. Then you might actually find a nice idea to suggest with your partner. And you might actually take the lead. And you might just change your body language. Or you might change your, your verbal language. Or you might just change your energy. And your partner will just go, oh, what's going on there? I, I want to find out a little bit more. And they might just naturally come to you. Of course, if your partner's also not dealing with their own passion needs, that can be a block, a block to their energy. But really, in two uh, a relationship, it takes one person to up the ante on the passion meter and on the inspiration. It takes one inspiration to change the dynamic of the relationship. If you get stuck in the old dynamic of the relationship, that's what you're going to get. You're going to keep on repeating it. And even those 
couples I've seen that keep on repeating old dynamics, sometimes you just need to accept that it has to be repeated enough times until the record is broken. We don't understand why people come together in relationships sometimes. Most of you have had experience of people that were in a relationship and you're like, how does that work? There's something there that they're getting from each other. So if they keep on breaking each other's balls in a way and really going over the same old stuff, there's a reason there. And we judge it. Outside, we judge it. People inside the relationship judge it. But sometimes you just have to surrender to the fact that that's the dynamic that's required to help process some piece, whether they can't connect to that inspiration, whether they're not standing up for their needs, whether they're not verbalising what they want, whether they don't even have the time to give themselves to determine what they want. Relationships are always about determining what are you going to take a stand for. The other day I watched a beautiful video about a young nine-year-old girl who's got a movement called Make a Stand. And she's nine years old making a stand, selling lemonade at a stand for children in slavery. She's not going to stop making the lemonade, and she's generated hundreds of thousands of dollars now to stop child slavery. She's not going to stop her mission until there's no more child slavery. Sometimes with the relationship, it takes that attitude to say, I'm going to do whatever it takes to take this relationship to the next level. Sometimes it's also about saying, I'm going to do whatever it takes for me in this dynamic to get what I need for me to move forward. And that's why relationships are so, ooh, you know, sometimes I'm compromising, sometimes I'm giving too much, sometimes I'm not taking enough for myself. But it's the actual inherent setup of a relationship. It's to work out how much are you going to give to this person for this period of time. And some of us have been overwhelmed by that to death do us part thing, right? We've got to commit to this relationship for the rest of our lives. And for some of us, it's actually what we totally deeply desire and long for at that soul level. But not all relationships will be that. And we've, we're starting to see how to actually balance your personal needs in the relationship, how the relationship can be expanded so you don't feel trapped by it. It's interesting this last week or so that the website that had all the people disclosed their information who are cheaters has come out. It's a little bit like the whole world is opening up to the fact that we cheat. It's been a, a truth for thousands of years, but now we're actually going to start saying, okay, it's an aspect of relationship. It's not a fun one. Well, it is when you're <laughs> experiencing the new love affair. And, but for the person who's experiencing the suffering of it, and sometimes it's a person who cheats as well, they can't live with themselves for it, it can be really hard. We've got to see that there's choices and there's ways that we're compulsive in, in lust or in relationships. And those choices... We have more power about them now. We have more consciousness about them. When you're more conscious about your choices, you have more power. When you don't sit there and just judge, oh, I cheated on my partner, and judge, 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 there's no choice there. If you actually sit and feel, yeah, I cheated on my partner, where did that come from? If you begin to look at what that whole relationship dynamic is, it really throws up a lot of challenges to the relationship that we haven't consciously dealt with as a culture. We've always had people cheating, but we've just sort of accommodated and said that's okay, it's part of life, men are like this, women can't satisfy a man, whatever story, it's been lots of stories, not interested. What is it that the choices are that you have? This is what people come to love and relationship coaching for. They want to get creative, they want to be free. So passion and inspiration is your place to have and develop a freedom. You might not like something in the relationship. How can you inspire it to change? Look, I'm the worst person when it comes to boundaries and getting angry in the relationship by not standing up for myself. So I've had to suffer through this and learn. And I'm still a work in progress. 
I get angry because my boundaries aren't respected or recognised. And I have to go inside and go, well, something hasn't been recognised here. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I can point my finger at my partner all I like, but what am I going to do to take that relationship to the next level? How am I going to inspire my partner rather than throw angry words at them? And as we mentioned in communicating with words, the worst scar you can do in a relationship is have those compulsive, angry, bitter, nasty words. And I watched that in my family too. So I really have been burnt by those words and I don't do that in my family. None of my siblings do that with words anymore. We really have watched how it's destroyed relationships and all of us learned we didn't want to go there. You don't. But the only way to shift how that compulsive language comes out is to get inside, feel and find what it is that needs to be expressed and how you can do it in an expansive way. So let's look at an expansion exercise about your passion. I usually um, suggest two things to do when you're connecting to your passion. Of course, with all that lovely connection to your body that I recommend, is just to practice, practice, practice feeling how good that is to open up to your heart and yourself and that centre of your body. The other part is to really just know what to do with those other feelings that suggest you might shut down that passion or you might push that partner away or you might feel very betrayed for whatever reason, whether it's a sexual betrayal or something else. So in, in today's exercise, we're going to look at the part where you actually feel like you need to shut down. I'm going to connect you with a body connection process and this is one that I use pretty simply all the time. We see it a lot in, on my I Love Monday videos, connecting into the heart, giving that space for the heart and feeling that in that extension of the heart. So firstly, we're going to connect in to that place where we constantly come back to and we'll never leave, really. Feeling the hands now on the heart chakra, centre of the chest, just start to feel that pulse or that blood underneath your hands or warmth or whatever you feel there. Bring awareness to it. And as you breathe, close the eyes. And ask to connect to that higher aspect of yourself that's always present for you. You might call it your higher self or whatever you call it. Just your higher emotions, your higher thoughts. That's that place that's in you but also outside of you looking down and loving you or watching you, watching your life, witnessing, creating a space for you to make mistakes and grow and discover. And as you breathe in, just feel the chest underneath your hands start to expand. You can see the wind around me at the moment. So play with that energy of that breath, opening you to elements that you may not quite know or you haven't explored yet. And as you breathe, just feel that connection between the chest and the hands. So the hands are energetic connections from your heart. They actually reach from the heart themselves. So feel that energy of your heart center in the hands. And underneath the hands, you may even feel a subtle energy. So I'm going to give you the image of the golden light. But play with any energy that you like. You may like to see a fire or a flame, candlelight, a rose. Just see what comes to you as you connect to the subtle energy there. And sometimes when you connect here, you may get the same image. You may get different ones. So just be open to what comes now.
And as you breathe into the heart centre now, we're going to ask you to connect to where your passion or inspiration lives. So I call inspiration the positive aspect of passion. See where it lives here, if it lives here or somewhere else in your body. So notice what happens when I ask you to connect to where your passion or inspiration lives. You may get a word or you may find a person come to you. What gives you that inspiration for life? And as you feel the heart itself, some of you may even notice as you connect to that inspiration that the quality changes in your heart. The vibration of it feels different or just it just feels nice or a little bit faster in your pulse. Something might flicker or be different for you. So when you wish to enhance that passion, or inspiration, you can simply connect to the heart and ask, I really just want to feel more passion today. You can set the energy of your day, or if you wish to lighten up or spice up your relationship, just sit and connect here and ask for that feeling to come. And then you can visualize in the center of the chest a golden light. Feel how your passion is actually inspired by the golden light, energized. So at any time you can actually really just ask for that passion to be kindled or rekindled inside of you. For some of you, you may notice that as you're experiencing the passion or the feeling underneath your hands, some images come up and those are very vital. They're things that your higher self or your body or your emotions are bringing to you to have a look at. So when you do connect here and there's something that comes, pay attention to what's coming. Still feel the energy that you're being given or asked to feel more of in that passion. And then if at any time you have an experience in a relationship where you're feeling that the energy is being dampened, what you can do is just simply connect back here, feel the energy and ask, show me, what is it that is dampening or stopping my passion right now? And just ask that question, notice if there's anything that came up for you. What is it that's stopping or dampening my inspiration? So for some of you, if you do have 
emotions coming, you can simply ask, please show me what I need to understand or see to transform this energy. Inspiration is a very important role in our world. At any moment, you may feel tired or not really feeling it, bored, lacking motivation. That's normal. But to reconnect to that inspiration is just as easy and quick. So if you do experience a dampen or block or sense of boredom or numbness, simply say, show me what I need to understand or see in order to transform this feeling. And then once again we're going to close with that feeling of the golden energy in the heart. Reconnecting you back to that permanent connection that you have with that higher part of yourself. It's always there, ready for you, waiting for you to build that connection through asking it to come in and fill your heart. And then as a closure of that connection, just find a way to honour that connection so you can give thanks. Thanks for that understanding or connection to your passion or inspiration. So I hope you experience a week that experiments with passion and how it can rekindle or come up or bubble up in certain ways. We too often think that when negative things happen to us that it's the end of something and we don't look at how something new can come. If we do, we tend to think it must be something drastically new. Even these subtle things that come up in your relationship or love life or in yourself are very important to nurture, witness, notice and of course give thanks for. And once you witness these things that are bubbling up in you that feed your inspiration, it actually generates a connection to it. It's like a, a, a generator, literally, a battery of energy. So I send you much love and blessings for your inspirations that come to you and have a blessed week.